you, when you pass cops in this thing, you just have to be so still and respectful so they don't see you. He's looking. He's looking. He's definitely looking. <laughs> they, they hate these you things. You have to be on your best behavior for sure. And go Shining under this. 20. Hello, everybody. Guess what? This thing is just angry all the time. It is an angry demon that exists inside of this engine. It's just yelling <laughs> and pulling and trying to throw you into trees. This is the most absurdly loud car I've ever driven in my life. Yeah. Let's get into it. The 2016 Ford Shelby Mustang GT350. are getting a 5.2 liter V8 engine yep. that produces 526 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. Yep. Those are pretty good numbers. However, the car weighs how many pounds? 3,726. That is a heavy, heavy this car. This thing is a boat. Yeah, it really feels like a solid brick while you're driving it. Yeah. The red line is a thousand rpm that's wild so you get that roar not only for a short time you get it sustained up until and eight thousand rpm right it pulls and pulls and it just continues to pull the quiet exhaust mode on the 2018 and newer uh, mustang gts was inspired by this car because a ford engineer was backing out of his driveway one morning in his gt350 and his neighbors called the cops because it was too loud. It's like, I mean, I, surely <laughs> somebody would have noticed along the production line, like, is this too loud? Like, hey, maybe this is a little Is this too loud? Much? Three, two, one. You get it? Yeah. Yes. And that was 16. Nice. Wow, I was very wrong. You got it in half the distance I thought. I actually got that pretty quick. Nice. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. One thing uh, that, <laughs> depending on your personality, you'll like or you'll hate, is these seat belts. They do their job. They uh, Yeah, they really They pull. lock. They lock, and I can't... You can't unlock it like other cars. There we go. Gosh. Okay, that was... Um, that was quick. That was quick, and that was loud. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> It looks a lot more aggressive than your stock standard Mustang. I agree. I think this is definitely the best of the lineup, um, yeah. looks wise. I mean, eh, it's contentious whether the, the, the 2020 GT500 looks better. Some people think so, some people but don't. But it's not out yet. But it's not out yet. So for now, this is the angriest and the best looking and the best sounding Mustang. I think so. I've said this before in a previous episode, I think the modern the current generation Mustangs are the best looking they've ever made. I will, okay, I do agree with that, but one knock I do have to give this is the uh, the spoiler on yeah. the back is very flimsy. Like, I'm looking out of the mirror right now and it's just like, wop, 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 wop. It just like- That is very, very cheap. It just kind of looks like it flops around back there. Yeah, I mean, obviously they don't want to put a bunch of weight on the back, but that thing, you can't open the trunk by the wing because you feel like you're gonna break it. Yeah, when um, you touch it, yeah, it just feels it really- a lot. Feels really flimsy. I think that uh, what Ford does with these gauges is really retro looking mm -hmm. and it's really cool here with your oil pressure, uh, PSI and oil temperature. With the added benefit of being a cost savings because they're super cheap and analog. They are, but like- That's not a bad thing though. It's not necessarily it bad. Cool. You can make it look cool. I love how it just says Shelby in some really cool place. All over the place. Shelby, Cobra in the cup holders. Yep, snake, Cobra in the middle. You got Cobras on the wheels. All over the place. All over the place. There are snakes everywhere. It is hard to miss that this is a Shelby. Yes. I like the cockpit. I think it's pretty cool. I will say there's a lot, it does feel cheap. A lot of plastic. And here's here's the thing. Um, it, it, that kind of gets us into the cost of this car. This car, brand new, is forty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars. Which like for the performance, for all the performance you get out of it, is worth it. Yeah. But it's no luxury experience. I mean, no. in so many ways. Like first off. The materials in here are cheap feeling and like plasticky and they Real don't feel nice to the touch. 
Uh, the seats are comfy, but I've sat in better seats. These are miles better than the, uh, what did we do last time? The little, the little one, what was it? The Alpha, the 4C. Oh, the 4C. The 4C. Yeah. That was a joke. Yeah, definitely a lot better. It's more comfortable than that. Yeah. But I don't know. It's not much of an improvement. I think well, the problem is they're not stiff enough for yeah. a sporty car like this. Well, okay, the seats are comfy, but this, that noise yeah. is so obnoxious to me. Yeah, um, this, the car is not sound deadened very well at all. Yeah, if I drove this car for over half an hour, I would be upset. Yeah, you'd start to go <laughs> slightly insane because even when you're just kind of cruising, the drone is always, always there. Yeah, okay, so for reference, this is cruising speed at 40 miles an hour in fifth gear. Give it a listen. Yeah, it just like, doesn't go away. It's, as long as your foot is on the gas, you're going to hear that really low, Even when it's not, drone. my foot is not on the gas right now. <laughs> I'm not it's like, touching It's it. like buffeting at some points. Like when you're at some speeds, it feels like you've got the windows down because yeah. that sound on your ears is just so... And it, it feels like it's rattling your head. Yeah. That's why this is not a luxury experience, mostly. Because no. like, yeah, these seats are comfy, but the inside is cheap and that engine is so brutal and so loud and like it's cool. I love it, mm -hmm. but I only love it for a short <laughs> amount of time. This is not a road tripper. No. And this is on the normal exhaust. This is, they have yeah. an even louder exhaust, the active exhaust. It just, we're not allowed to use it. We're not. it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it, so basically, to go back to the quality of this thing, uh, this little lever is basically coming out of its housing, so you can't turn on the active exhaust. We've tried. Yeah, and again, okay, this car has 16,000 miles on it. Yeah. That's not a ton. No. And yet, things are already feeling. That's like nothing. That's like a year's worth of driving. Yeah, things are already feeling kind of flimsy and falling apart in yeah. some areas. This is definitely like focus level interior quality. I've got s yeah. about 60,000 miles on my Focus, and nothing's falling apart yet. There's some rattles, but like this is even worse. Yeah, I, I would agree. The interior of this feels about the same in like an entry-level Ford Focus. Yeah, and it's not terrible. Like the entry-level Focus, the SE, is better than some entry-level cars. Yeah, but again, the entry-level Focus is what, like 18 grand? Yeah. This is 50. <laughs> yeah, so you should get a little bit more for your money, even if basically all of that money is going towards the, the engine and the performance. Yeah. Just a little bit, a little touch of luxury for the, the Shelby models would be yeah. nice. And speaking of that, this is the manual transmission yes. version of the GT350, which is probably the way I would option it out. Uh, I think I would prefer getting the manual, especially because the GT500 so far is automatic only yes. that Ford has announced. I hope that Ford does come out with a manual transmission variant, but for now, you're limited only with the automatic. Yeah. So if you want the top of the line manual Mustang, you're gonna get this or the GT350R, which is the step up above this, mm -hmm. and that starts at around 63,000. Yeah, that's uh, like a stripped down racier version of this, even less yeah. comfortable, even less sounded. But only a little faster. The zero to 60 on that is only 3.9 seconds. I will say it looks a lot more aggressive, yeah. um, which is hard to do in a car that looks so aggressive already, but I think it looks better. I don't think I'd take it over this one. Really? Why? Because I could just slap on some additional aero bits on this and save and, yourself and like save 13. myself the additional earache. Get it wiggly. <laughs> there must have been a little dip in the road or something <laughs> because I was about 7,000 RPM and it decided to go a little squirrely. Yeah, that was squirrely. I will say <laughs> it's perfectly well behaved in that you wow. can recover from those wiggles just fine. Yeah, I feel like you're, you're, you feel pretty confident yeah. in this. Like, yes, it does wiggle and it does that, but you can recover really fast. Yeah, there's there's really not much to be concerned about with this car. It is very responsive. It handles well. It's got a lot of power, so it's going to want to do that to you, so don't freak out when it does. Yeah. But, I mean, there hasn't been a point in this where I've been scared, I would say. <laughs> Joe might not agree I with that. Yeah, I disagree. I hate <laughs> being the passenger in cars like this. Yeah. Because, like... Totally understandable. When I'm driving, I never feel scared. Like, I always feel confident behind the wheel. But when I'm in the passenger seat, I'm like, ah! <laughs> Cup holders. You have two up here in the front. And they're pretty nice. They're a good size. Yeah. This is an American car, so you get decent-sized cup holders. 
Yep. Fit Ford, a thermos. Fit Ford a, knows their customer base. They know you're going to stop a Whataburger. Yep. USB charging port and a cigarette lighter up front. I don't believe this has Apple CarPlay. Yeah. Which also makes me believe it doesn't have Android Auto because I tried using my iPhone and it would not work. I'm going to say this. If a car doesn't have Apple CarPlay, I get mad. Yeah. And I know that's like such a princessy thing to say. It is. But, <laughs> but I hate it. I, on the other hand, have never used Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's I don't know how. So you just plug it in. <laughs> you just like plug your USB in and yeah. you plug your phone in. Boom. And then it just starts. However, it does have navigation. Although it's really basic. It is like, pretty basic. I mean, crappy it, navigation. It looks like 2008 built-in yeah, navigation. Yeah, despite being a 2016, but yeah. There are harnesses for child seats, which you're a terrible parent <laughs> if you ever use those yeah. in this. I mean, this is, this, Can it's very small. you imagine doing what we just did with a baby in the back seat? You were Start a, them young. You're the worst parent. Uh, Y'all don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you have a trunk in this. Um, it's which pretty decent. It has, I, I it's pretty decent. Fit in there, and I guess it makes it not like totally impractical because you probably could fit some golf clubs in there. That I'd being imagine. said, this car is not very practical. Well, Let's no talk gas mileage. Okay, gas mileage. If you buy this and you ever look at the statistic <laughs> and it makes you think about it, you're an idiot. Yeah. But this thing gets 14 mpg city and 21 mpg on the oh yeah on the highway. That kind of hurts. Which is bad, and it's also premium, so this is a gas guzzler. Yeah. 14 mpg in the city is bad. Pretty brutal. Like, that's a yeah. big truck. I yeah. mean, there are trucks that get twice that. And the way that we drive, it's probably worse, because that's, like, average. Yeah. Right? So if you're, like, gunning it and gassing it a lot, I mean... I mean, I've I'm, I'm been cruising in sixth here, and that's probably what it expects yeah. uh, to get that 18, or 14, rather. But I don't know. In midnight sky. I, I looked up how long it would take listening to 90 decibels to suffer hearing loss. Yeah. The answer is eight hours. So if you had this car on for eight hours with the windows down and you were driving, you would probably suffer ear damage. Wow. So no road trips in this car. At least with the windows down. Yeah. This is a very, very inconsiderate car. It is. I think this is the rudest car you can almost own. Because people look at you when you drive this, but they're not necessarily looking at you because yeah. they're like, that's cool. right on, man. Yeah. Or like, that's really cool. They're list they're looking they're at like, you because shut up. you blast it and people yeah. look over at you like, oh my god, really? Yeah. Like <laughs> people can't hear themselves talk. Dogs are gonna freak out, which is the worst <laughs> part. Don't you ever scare a dog. <laughs> and old people might have a heart attack. Uh, it's just it's it's just so rude. <laughs> But that's part of what makes it awesome. Yeah, again. This <laughs> At the same time. All right, so starting us off is performance. <laughs> there was the wiggle. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. I had to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I'm going to give it, this may sound not especially high, but I'm gonna go with a seven. Oh, wow. That is a little lower than I would have thought. I was yeah. gonna give it an eight. An eight. Yeah, I think this is more car than anybody needs and the performance it's a, it, is I think, there. I think this is, for 95% of people, this is the maximum level of performance you would probably ever need and want. Yeah, I'd say anything more than this is irresponsible. Practicality, which is not uh, great. <laughs> Four. I'm going three and a half. Okay. Because it's not good. It's not good. You can do some stuff with it. You can carry some, a couple of little people. I think you could probably um, throw a pa like a pair of golf clubs. You could haul like a decent amount of groceries, which would be obnoxious in this, but yeah. it's doable. And, I think uh, the percussive force of the exhaust alone would break eggs. So <laughs> maybe don't bring eggs. All right. Next up, value. $50,000. When we started this review, I would have said it was pretty low because you can get a GT or a Focus RS. Yeah, but after having driven it, after having do you driven think it, this is more fun than you would have in the RS or the GT? The RS is very different because the yeah. RS, you're not going to lose control of it around a turn. That thing just sticks and it's well, not it's as fast. It's partially because <clears throat> it's all-wheel drive. Yes. And it's not as crazy engine as this. Rally car, muscle car. Yeah. Um, 
I won't say it's more fun. I will say this is a blast and it's more fun than I've had in either of the other Mustangs we've driven. Yes, definitely. This is the most fun I've ever had in a muscle car. Yeah. Zero percent luxury. Yeah. Not comfortable for longer than 30 minute road trips. Totally agree. But performance animal. Oh and yeah. For that, I think the value is good. Good um, border and great, honestly. I'm going to give it a seven. I was thinking a six and a half. Okay. No, no, no. I'm going to six. Yeah. That is cool factor. That's dicey. It is because... Because a lot of people look at it, but again, like I said earlier, I think most people look at this because they think you're a tool. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Maybe. But <laughs> this is a gorgeous car. This is a... It is. I mean, I would say objectively pretty. It is, yeah. I, I do agree it is pretty, but in a brutish kind of way. Yeah. It's pretty in a very masculine kind of sense. Sure. I think. But there are so many Mustangs on the road. There are, but this is the Shelby this Mustang. Is, I still do look when I see Shelby, so I'm like, ooh, Shelby. Yeah. Because they're nice looking cars, and they are but more is it rare. cool to the average person? Meh. I'd say I so. Yeah, I'd, really? I think I would say so. I don't know. Because <laughs> Mustangs are like... I think your average person doesn't really know the difference between this and like a, and like a base, like... No, I, would, I wouldn't say that, that they know the difference, but I still think they would call any of the Mustangs a cool car. Uh, I'm going to give it a six. It's cool, oh. but like... I thought you were going to give it lower than that. Nah, six. It's cool, but not That's funny. Cool. We're, we're pretty close then. I was going to give it a six and a half. Okay. Wow. All that argument. Yep, and it came down to half a point. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to go with an eight or something. Oh, it's like, not that cool at all. It's not, yeah, definitely not that cool. I just felt the need to defend Mustang as a batch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, quality. Not that great, uh -uh. in my opinion. Uh -uh, very plastic. Uh, like I already mentioned, the switch already doesn't work after 16,000 miles. Unacceptable. This, listen to this. Yeah, it's gross. It's just like cheap, cheap Everything plastic. Is pl uh, the uh, armrests also, are leather. That's it's nice. very grimy in here and crummy, I feel like. Yeah. And again, like it's not that old. Like This has only been driven 16,000 miles. I I'm going to give the quality a four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, I think it's a, I don't know. I think it's it deserves a four. Yeah. It's less than average. It's not that great. And then that leads us finally into fun factor, which is stupid high. I'm gonna give this. Oh man, I haven't laughed as hard as I have. That's the thing. In any man. other episode. This has put so many stupid smiles on my face. Yeah. Just driving around, arguably more than almost anything else we've driven. Like it's crazy how much fun this is. I'm gonna give it. A, oh man, my ears hurt and my voice is hoarse from having to yell over the exhaust yeah, but there, it's so fun there are some negatives but that's also kind of fun in a way ah. honestly this is gonna sound controversial i'm gonna give it an eight oh. i think it's i think it's that fun i was gonna give it an eight and a half oh <laughs> believe it or not and after big brain time big brain the average score is a 36.5 all right. Which is pretty high. That is pretty the high. The closest comparable thing that we've done in the past is the BMW M3. What was that? The BMW M3, we rated a 36.75. That so, 0.25 is a little bit of refinement, I It's I a little imagine. bit of refinement, and the M3 is significantly more expensive yes. than this. Also, compared to the uh, 2017 Mustang GT, we rated that at 35.25. Okay, so this is so, a full point higher. This is over a full point higher than the GT, which yeah. I think deserves it. And I'd say so. Most funny to me is uh, the Alfa Romeo 4C, which we rated a 30.5. <laughs> Rip. So this is about six. six points. Yeah, this is six, a solid six points wow. higher than the 4C. And I stand by that. And I also stand by that. And it's funny because this and the 4C are roughly the same price. Yeah. <laughs> There's your review of the yep. 2016 GT350 Shelby. It's a beautiful Ooh. car. It's very loud. I don't think I'd get it for me because it's just too dang loud. But if you really like the noise and you've got the money, I would say just go and buy it. Go and buy it today and don't regret it. Don't regret it. Amazing car. Thank yeah. you guys for watching. It's your yep. first episode. We hope you could hear us. Uh, check out some of our other stuff and we will see you in the next one. Yep. See you guys then. Bye. CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. 
They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with CuriosityStream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.